Now more than ever, we know what digital can do. We know the potential that it has. Tanzania is well placed to take full advantage of this digital transformation. There are nearly 27 million internet users across the country. A shock will never grow its environment. Young women and men are at the center of building resilient and inclusive communities. Access to the digital economy is a key avenue for GDP growth. You can become a CEO right after graduation. Only if the environment is right and only if you have the right product. The current fourth industrial revolution is influenced by adoption of advanced digital technologies. Um, in retrospect, Tanzanian youth have always needed uh, opportunities to be included in the digital economy. However, we know that if schools are connected to the internet, then the young people will reap the benefits in their future. But there is no way change must come, and it is already here. Now more than ever, we know what digital can do. We know the potential that it has. Tanzania is well placed to take full advantage of this digital transformation. There are nearly 27 million internet users across the country. A uh, shock will never grow its environment. Young women and men are at the center of building resilient and inclusive communities. Access to the digital economy is a key avenue for GDP growth. You can become a CEO right after graduation. Only if the environment is right and only if you have the right product. The current fourth industrial revolution is influenced by adoption of advanced digital technologies. Um, in retrospect, Tanzanian youth have always needed uh, opportunities to be included in the digital economy. However, we know that if schools are connected to the internet, then the young people will reap the benefits in their future. But there is no way change must come, and it is already here. Now more than ever, we know what digital can do. We know the potential that it has. Tanzania is well placed to take full advantage of this digital transformation. There are nearly 27 million internet users across the country. A uh, shock will never grow its environment. Young women and men are at the center of building resilient and inclusive communities. Access to the digital economy is a key avenue for GDP growth. You can become a CEO right after graduation. Only if the environment is right and only if you have the right product. The current fourth industrial revolution is influenced by adoption of advanced digital technologies. Um, in retrospect, Tanzanian youth have always needed uh, opportunities to be included in the digital economy. However, we know that if schools are connected to the internet, then the young people will reap the benefits in their future. But there is no way change must come, and it is already here.
Now more than ever, we know what digital can do. We know the potential that it has. Tanzania is well placed to take full advantage of this digital transformation. There are nearly 27 million internet users across the country. A shark will never grow its environment. Young women and men are at the center of building resilient and inclusive communities. Access to the digital economy is a key avenue for GDP growth. You can become a CEO right after graduate. Only if the environment is right and only if you have the right product. The current fourth industrial revolution is influenced by adoption of advanced digital technologies. Um, in retrospect, Tanzanian youth have always needed uh, opportunities to be included in the digital economy. However, we know that if schools are connected to the internet, then the young people will reap the benefits in their future. But there is no way.
kupogea siti za mbele ili ukumbi wetu uweze kuonekana vizuri lakini kwa sasa kwa jinsi tulivyokaa tumeacha gapu kubwa sana katikati hapa kwa hiyo nawaomba sana zile mistari mitatu ya nyuma Taf, tafazali mistari mitatu ya nyuma tafazali sana nawaomba msogee mbele kwa pande zote Tafazali sana watu waliokaa mistari mitatu ya nyuma samahani na waomba sana sana msogee mbele ili tuweze kuanza kipindi chetu cha mwisho kwa siku hii ya leo na walioko nje tafadhali sana tunaomba mwingie ndani ili tuweze kuanza session yetu ya mchana ndugu wa shiriki karibuni katika kipindi chetu cha mchana na session hii inahusiana zaidi na masuala ya digital skills lakini jina la kikao inaitwa Transform, transforming information society to knowledge and business society na kwa siku ya leo tuna wenzetu kutoka Digital Opportunity Trust na washirika wao watakuwa nasi kwa kipindi cha masaa mawili wakielezea ripoti zao lakini vile vile wakituonyesha jinsi gani impact na jinsi gani ambao tunaweza ku minimize hasa swala zima la digital skills for youth employment and entrepreneurship. Kwa hiyo napenda kumkaribisha moderator wetu wa kipindi hiki cha mchana ndugu Pamela Chogo karibu ili uweze kutuongoza kwenye kipindi hiki. Karibu sana. Asante. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Habarini za mchana. Kwa bahati nzuri mimi ni mwalimu. Kwa hiyo mwalimu bana akishapewa mic. <laughs> Tunajiandaa, si ndio? Tusije tukashangaa mwisho wa siku tukaambiwa nini? Kila mtu achane karatasi. Alafu tukawa na kakwizi kidogo. Hiyo <laughs> ndio sifa ya kuwa mwalimu. Uh, we are going to be having a great session. As mentioned, uh, the title is uh, Transforming the Transforming Information Society into Knowledge and Business Society. I will start with uh, a common phrase that I think most of us have heard about it. There is a, say a saying that says, data is the new oil. Nadhani wengi tumesha isikia hiyo statement. It has many interpretations. Kila mtu niki, nikisema hapa ni, ni invite watu kutoa interpretation, kila mtu atatoa interpretation yake. Lakini at the end of the day, 
looking at the digital world that we are in today, we look at how we can use the digital skills in line with the infrastructure and the devices that we have, and at the end of the day, have economic gain. So we will be having two very interesting presentations. One will be from uh, Ms. Diana, the country director of uh, DOT, Digital Opportunity Trust. And they are going to be launching their report. But within this report, they will be sharing uh, their experiences in terms of what they do, but also how they help youth using digital platforms and at the end of the day get economic gain. In line with that presentation, we'll, uh, we'll also have a presentation from Dr. Salome, and uh, she will be taking us through tech uh, gender gap. And as you know, we usually have these discussions, but I'm happy that uh, in front of me here, is it balanced? What can we say with the panel that I have this afternoon? Huh? Quarter balance. Uh, overbalanced. <laughs> Let me ask the next question. I think you remember what we had in the morning. <laughs> Was it balanced? <laughs> I think you have the answer. <laughs> so uh, without taking uh, much of your time, I'll be monitoring. You know, we had a uh, very nice lunch, eh? and it's the afternoon. So the session is going to be very interesting, and I hope no one will be overthinking. You know, sometimes we overthink. Eh? So I'll be monitoring that as well. So as I was introduced earlier, my name is Pamela Chogo, and I am a lecturer from the Institute of Accountancy Arusha. Uh, but also I am the General Secretary of Internet Society Tanzania and a PhD candidate at Nelson Mandela African Institute of Science and Technology. So I am so much vested within the ICT ecosystem. So may I take this opportunity to welcome Ms. Diana to come and give her presentation on this digital skills for youth employment and entrepreneurship. Please, a round of applause for Ms. Diana. Now more than ever, we know what digital can do. We know the potential that it has. Tanzania is well placed to take full advantage of this digital transformation. There are nearly 27 million internet users across the country. A shock will never grow its environment. Young women and men are at the center of building resilient. Is Diana Ninsima, and I'm the country director for Digital Opportunity Trust Dot in Tanzania. Um, DOT is an international nonprofit um, that supports young people in the area of digital skills development. Um, we mostly um, have uh, several pathways that include um, digital skills for jobs, um, digital skills for businesses, but also how digital can support um, social entrepreneurship. So today is not really about DOT. It is about the ecosystem and the work that we have um, done together the last couple of months. Um, so I'm joined uh, today with um, other partners that have come from afar and beyond um, to be part of the launch of the digital inclusion for all uh, project, um, which is um, part of the Youth Digital Summit that was conducted in August uh, 2021. So with me today, I have um, John Mushi from uh, Ubuntu Hub, so if you can wave um, to the audience. Um, Rashid Ali Rashid from Cube Zanzibar, yes. Pasco Charles from Archbishop Mihayo University College of Tabora, South Amukta, yes, wonderful. Living Com from St. Augustine University, Saudi. Yes, Angela Ilomo Aralabs, Iringa, Gibson Kiwago, Project Inspire Tanga, Kiko Kiwango Tautik Launchpad, Morogoro, and Faraja Kota Nyalandu from Dotohab, Dar es Salaam and Arusha. Oh, she, 
she's a triple threat. Okay, wonderful. So the report um, that we're going to be presenting today is part of the findings or insights that were gathered um, within the Tanzania Youth Digital Summit that took place at the end of August in 2021. Um, the report and the summit were supported through funding from the European Union as a co-host, um, but also other spon sponsorship partners such as Global Affairs Canada that have funded DOT for very many years. Um, until now, we have a new project that runs until 2023. Um, we also got support from UNICEF and Seagull Family Foundation. But we worked with um, partners from 10 other regions within um, Tanzania, mainland, and Zanzibar. And those partners have representatives that have come here um, today. So I'll quickly, swiftly take you through um, some of the insights so as I go through, these are not voices of Diana, neither are they voices of the partners. They are voices of young people that came through in the summit and contributed towards how we can shape a more inclusive digital um, society in Tanzania. So some of the emerging lessons, you know, um, even yesterday we had it from several speakers that youth constitute more than 75% in Tanzania of the population. So the demographic is huge. Entrepreneurship seems to be the only common path. With such high rates of youth, you can only imagine that there's also unemployment. And so most youth find that they relate to entrepreneurship as a pathway vis-a-vis -vis employment, which is very scarce to get. Majority of youth prefer to learn digital skills to support their businesses. Again, it's tied to the point above. But also youth identified internet costs, a lack of skills, and pervasive cultural norms as just a few of the challenges in securing a digital livelihood. And finally, everyone was speaking here yesterday and even today, and we speak about youth as though it's just one person. Youth are different, they are segmented. They are not a homogeneous group. Within the youth, there's different fields, there's different fears, there's different challenges, there's different passions, there's different aspirations. And so, we cannot call them just youth, but really just to segment them and understand that within youth, indeed, there are subsections. So this is some of the statistics that um, emerged. So we conducted um, a baseline uh, research uh, prior to youth participating in the summit, but we also did post-session evaluations. And we also partnered with UNICEF Tanzania to run a digital skills poll within the U report platform that brought in more than 8,700 youth respondents. And so the report that you're hearing today is from the 8,700 youth respondents as part of the summit. But I'll just qualify that number a little bit because the entire summit this year was huge and massive and almost inclusive event up to date because it reached 2,716 young people from across the 10 regions that the summit went in. And we can only hope that that number will triple um, next year with more partners coming on board. So this is what youth told us when it comes to skills desired. 48% say they need digital skills for business. 23% employability skills. 18% digital skills for jobs. And, and 11% career development. When we ask them about um, which devices they frequently have access to, most of them have access to future phones and smartphones. But then again, this maybe might not really be inclusive of the youth in the rural, rural communities where we know most of them have access to only um, basic phones or Vitochi. We also went ahead and asked them how much they spend on internet 
on a weekly basis. And 29% said they spend less than 500 on the internet on a weekly basis. 51% spend 500 to 2,500. And 13% spend 2,500 to 5,000 um, shillings. We went ahead and asked them what they use when they access the internet, what do they use it for? 26% say they use it for social media, and so do I. 23% accessing e-services, so this number needs to move up. 19% others, they did not specify. 13% online learning, so clearly with COVID-19 and everyone going onto the internet, you still see that um, the appetite and uptake for young people to learn online is, is, is not that high. 10% recreation and 9% job hunting. So again, skills for business. The report is divided in three sections, each supposed to represent the diversity and uniqueness of the youth. The first one being start, how you youth um, take the first steps into the digital business. So this section shares about their perceptions towards online businesses. Um, it also reveals the skills that they are, are most useful to them. And the second component is sell. So we explore a little bit of what e-commerce looks like for young people in Tanzania. And the third one is support. So what needs to happen? Yesterday, we had several other speakers speak about catalytic funds. Um, we had people speaking about boosting and supporting innovation hubs and spaces to bring in more young people. Um, so what does support look like? And what needs do the young people actually have? So when we go into start, there are several things that were mentioned. But the starter skill number one that young people need is to recognize social media and the internet as a powerful tool for digital inclusion. So 53% of the youth said they already use their social medias to grow a livelihood. But again, this was the population that came through you know, to um, respond to the summit. I'm, I'm sure that this number becomes much, much lower when you go into the rural communities. And the first set of these starter skills need to also introduce them to the mindsets they need, the behavior, the attitude, the culture, but also recorrecting the notion that social medias are just for fun. They're not for fun. Now they are platforms which um, are used for businesses, uh, for young people. Starter skill number two is um, digital skills for market research and customer feedback. Um, I'm sure most of us, you know, we, we use, um, whether, it's, whether it's Google Forms or um, we look through analytics through the posts that we share on social media. Indeed, social medias can be a huge, huge um, opportunity for young people to access quick data feedback on their products that can help them to Okay. <laughs> um, so these youth, once registered onto these platforms, they need to be aware about how to optimize these platforms, the different features, you know, Twitter insights, Instagram insights. I'm sure at the current rate, we are only using just a small portion of um, what those social medias can actually do um, for our businesses. Starter skill three is digital marketing, a new generation of creative tools. I mean, we were chatting earlier that gone are the days that someone says, go to my website. No, it's go to my Instagram. Uh, see my WhatsApp status. I'll be posting uh, new bed sheets um, tomorrow. Um, how many of us still get links for websites? Instagram? That's the more popular thing, Facebook. And these are the things that resonate for young people. And with these new generation of technologies, which also qualify to be freemiums, so they are free for access, such as Canva, they, they place the creativity in the hands of young people 
to co-create um, tools, to create logos, and um, they have easy to access templates um, that they don't need to um, buy for. But we also know the letters such as um, uh, Grammarly, um, which um, helps most of us as, as we do our writing uh, endeavors. Um, so browser-based design apps like Canva equip these young people with the superpowers um, to tap into creative, um, creative uh, tools that can support them. So the recommendations when it comes to the start section is that um, we need to meet youth where they are at. We cannot speak about websites. We cannot speak about you know, the different ABCDs when we don't know the type of young person that we're designing for. Um, so meet the youth where they are at in their knowledge and use of social media for entrepreneurship and employment and provide them with the support to register and gain the right mindsets and attitudes on how to use these platforms. Um, but also to create user personas so let's get away with the notion of I'm working with youth, like which persona, which type of youth, segment youth. Is it rural youth? Is it youth in the agri space? Is it young vulnerable women? Is it, who is it and what are their needs? Then we also need to pivot digital skills training to promote more of less expensive browser tools as the ones that um, um, I've just mentioned. And this last one, is um, an addition to what was said yesterday. So equipping schools um, with the internet and incorporating digital skills um, where youth can adapt much more earlier than just waiting until they're done with college to begin to use um, ICTs. The second um, segment of the report is SEL. And um, when we're launching the Tanzania Youth Digital Summit, we invited a young person who spoke on behalf of other young people. And he says that um, Tanzania is an interesting place when it comes to um, ICTs. We are experiencing both the first, second, third, and fourth industrial revolutions at the same time. So while we're speaking about artificial intelligence and blockchain technologies, there's still places where they don't have connection to electricity. They don't have electricity. But also there's places where still um, young people just have access to a basic phone. And now we are bringing in these more advanced technologies. So how do we become more inclusive and not leave these other young people? Um, behind. Um, but also e-commerce seems to look interesting, interestingly different for young people in Tanzania. And I, I have a, an image that will showcase that later on and you, you let me know if you resonate with it, but I certainly do. Um, and so for this section we explore some of the um, some of the drivers, I guess, that have accelerated um, e-commerce, and you know, one of them being COVID-19. Um, it came in and um, it immediately disrupted us in the way we think, in the way we do business. So we can no longer get stuck in the traditional means of doing business. Everyone at this moment, young people, old people, need to be thinking about digitizing and digitalizing um, their businesses so that they can be more resilient to future shocks um, such as the COVID-19. Um, so worldwide, um, statistically, um, 1.5 billion people now shop online, and that's about 27% of the global population. But when it comes to developing countries, that figure is much, much lower, certainly maybe about 2% in countries like Tanzania. Um, the United Nations Conference and Trade and Development Center conducted a study which included about 60 public and private sector institutions to ask them how they can boost e-commerce in Tanzania. And their biggest priority from the partners, they said Tanzania needs to develop a national strategy or development plan for e-commerce development. But when we went through the report, we recognized that it lacks youth voices. Youth constituting more than 75% of the population, but also they are the ones who are mostly in the informal sector, 
we feel that um, they should have been more included in the design of um, e-commerce policies and regulations and recommendations that um, um, can, can, can take care of um, their needs and aspirations. Um, we also dive deeper to understand um, some of the perceptions that young people had around e-commerce. And it was interesting to find that uh, some of them have a trust issue when it comes to e-commerce. Either a friend ordered something that never came through, or they ordered um, a beautiful bag and it landed on the door and it looked like um, a bag for a five-year-old. Um, certainly, we've some of us have fallen prey um, to that. Um, but um, there is the softer part of e-commerce that we need to be looking at um, in that sense. How do we create a culture of trust when you post, um, um, what is it, like products online? Um, are they authentic? Um, how do you communicate with customers? Um, is the communication transparent? Is it honest? These are some of the fears that um, um, hinder young people from partaking in e-commerce. And uh, the last one is that uh, e-commerce should be paired with uh, high rates of digital literacy. It shouldn't just be about the policies that we are creating, but how are we um, capacitating the citizenry uh, to fully reap the benefits of um, uh, these platforms. And this also includes consumer protection policies, um, value chain approaches, and etc. And so this is the reality of how e-commerce looks like for a young person in Tanzania, at least the majority. Uh, because I know the minority might um, have access to shop from you know, Alibaba, Jumia, and all these very large uh, platforms. But on a day-to-day -day basis, the young person in Tanzania goes through stage one. So the entrepreneur purchases a product from a whole, of, on a wholesale price, whether it's in Kariako or anywhere, they bring it at home, they take a photo, they put it on your, their Instagram or WhatsApp status, <laughs> and a customer sees it, they are interested in the product, and they send a message through WhatsApp that I'm interested in that, do you have it on, and say yes. Uh, at times, I have to, to be honest that youth don't have them. They, they just merely are in the shops of Kariako. So they'll say, yes, we have them. And when the customer orders, they quickly run to Kariako, buy it, bring it, and send it by bus. And the customer will transact through mobile money, and the money will reach um, the young entrepreneur. and. To their best, the young entrepreneur might ask for a testimony from the customer and say, hey, can you, can you post something, like a testimony I can use on social media that it has reached you and, and, and whatnot. But that's how it looks like. How many of us resonate with this picture? Yes, that's, that's how it looks like. Um, so while we speak about e-commerce and all looking fancy and uh, all processes there that are um, you know, from a global standard, we have managed to innovate how e-commerce looks like um, for the majority of young people in Tanzania. Now, um, are we comfortable with this process? Do we need to do something about it? Or is it just where young people are at and that's okay? So recommendations from the start, um, sorry, from the, um, uh, the sale um, section is that uh, training programs should be structured in layers. So basic digital literacy, again, because these youth are at different levels, um, and soft skills related to them progressing forward. Um, but we also need to create a national strategy um, or development plan for e-commerce in Tanzania as per recommendations from UNCTAD um, and the private public sector uh, research that was done. And we need to initiate research into the fulfillment of services and e-commerce, um, as well as examine opportunities under the African continent of free trade. Now, the Africa continent of free trade, I'm sure this is just a term known by a certain group of people. 
but not many young people actually know what it is about and the opportunities that they can reap from this um, continental free trade um, agreement. The final um, section of the report is support, so what's needed. Um, and in this section, we explore several things, including online safety and gender digital divide. Um, Honorable Nema yesterday hinted on um, online um, harassment for women in politics and um, and you know I'm, I was seated over here saying it's not just women in politics it's just women all together um, so what can we do about that um, we also try to learn from young women within the focus group discussions what are the root causes that are coming or hindering them to be part of the um, uh, digital uh, technologies, and uh, most of them shared that uh, there's um, a digital uh, skills gap, and so they, they don't know um, how these platforms can be used. Um, but also, some of the content is not uh, is 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 not uh, women is it women friendly or women inclusive, uh, because at the current rate where majority of applications that are being designed are male designed, then AI has been designed from a male's lens vis-a-vis uh, -vis from a female lens, and hence most of these platforms also operate in a non-gender sensitive or gender inclusive way. Um, so these are some of the things that we need to be looking at, but also the, the freedom of women to speak freely online and offline, because the thing is, uh, if left unchecked, the harassment that goes on online could be translated offline. I mean, there are no limits um, for this. Um, and this, we have learned that it's one of the major things that is deterring young women from partaking into online businesses, the harassment. Uh, the minute they post their products, the comments become more personal um, than business related. Uh, or they become more sexist than business related. So we need to do something around this. Um, and uh, ICT Commission putting on, on a spotlight over here uh, because we um, also learned that 12% uh, of the professionals registered um, in the Tanzania's ICT com are women, just 12%. Um, can we up that number? What is the challenge? Why aren't they registered? Then also, we need to look into training centers and create spaces for youth to grow, learn, and fail. Grow, learn, and fail. Failure should be okay. It should be part of learning. It should be part of the process. It is a process. Um, and so the importance of youth being allowed to fail fast and have a soft safety net or a social safety net um, that supports them in their failures to rise back up and, and try again and try again because the journey of entrepreneurship is, is not easy. Um, we're also encouraged to run design sprints, um, providing young people with the seed grants to test their ideas. Um, you will learn later on that most of the finances that we have today focus on a more type of young person who is at a grown stage. Um, not many funding opportunities are looking at youth who are still at the ideation stage, thinking about um, that solution that they want to create for their communities that could translate into both impact and, and profit. Um, because again, most funders are risk averse. So they want youth who are already at a grown stage and the risks are, the risks are much lesser and they already have systems. They have uh, three year audit reports. They have a five staff team. Um, they also have all these policies in place. But I mean, how do youth get to that stage? Who invests in them to get to that level? Can we? bring out some of that money to, to test out, give you seed funding to allow them to, to test out, to learn, to grow the idea, to grow the organization so that it becomes ready to unlock more investment at a later stage. 
Um, so yes, completing the cycle of support. Um, so we need resources and grants for this. I mean, yesterday we had a lot, so we can only hope this translates at a later time. Um, yeah, so again, creating an enabling environment for these young people. This includes infrastructure and completing the missing pieces. Uh, we need to create an uh, education campaigns that are targeted to both men and women on online safety and how they can use uh, these spaces um, with more... Um, um, I guess with more caution, um, and also call out inappropriate behavior whenever it comes. Currently, there's a coalition for um, online spaces, but it's just still very few stakeholders that are trying to make it work. So we call upon on everyone that feels they've been um, affected in some way to do something about it, to, um, to advocate and, and, and sensitize and create awareness around uh, creating online safe spaces for everyone. Um, so as I wrap up, again, these are the two categories of young people that we're speaking about um, that we want to serve as a collective of partners here today. Um, number one being Susan. Uh, Susan just um, has basic literacy and numeracy, and some of us here, our labs in Iringa, Ndoto, they work with such youth. Um, some hubs work with maybe more advanced uh, young people, they will tell us later. Uh, but what Susan needs is just digital skills that can unlock her potential to tap into digital and media um, spaces, uh, but also accelerate her entrepreneurship skills. And this will lead her to be more empowered and increase her agency because now uh, technology has become a platform also for civic engagement. And if young people are not in these spaces, they are being left behind. So this is Susan. And for her, she says, my phone is my business and it is my life, so let's support her. And the other one is a more advanced young person. She is a graduate, so probably she's already informed in some uh, technologies and trends and, and everything that is happening in the blockchain technology kind of space. Um, and this, she just needs that space to test out and fail fast and grow and be invested in. And she or he is aspiring to be a tech innovator. Um, she wants to tap into digital micro work opportunities, go into app work and all these spaces that she can do freelance work. Um, but she doesn't know how to get there. Um, so she needs not only the soft skills, but the linkages that can get her into uh, these spaces. Uh, as I conclude, I have a few things here. Um, that I'm looking at, one is on access and skills. Um, that for young people, two, th two truths um, are very clear. One is that mobile technology is their entry point into the digital uh, economy. And second is that uh, digital skills are no longer an option. They are a must. The second one is that uh, digital is indeed a gender empowerment tool. In communities like Zanzibar, where young women might not be allowed to even go to the market to showcase their products, once they've posted them online, um, you know, a, a young woman or an old woman for that matter sits at home, posts their product online, an exchange is done, they never have to meet, and voila, business is done. So it is an empowerment tool, especially for women. Uh, the third one is that uh, this report and the work that we've done with these other several partners is very much government aligned. Um, so there is a plan to establish the uh, soft centers or the zonal soft uh, centers for young people. And we're hoping that this same ecosystem can work together within the respective hubs and accelerators to do sandboxes, to build talent, and to also um, do digital skills building for the young people there. And as I finalize, of course, it's all talk and talk, but it needs money, it needs resources. Um, so we welcome everyone on uh, uh, this agenda to subscribe to our cause. Um, we welcome funders and supporters so that uh, we can scale uh, digital inclusion to the ones who are, om or are always left behind. Uh, the ecosystem is ready. As you can see, we've already now started on a pilot uh, in 10 regions. 
these partners are part of the wider project that have just started and um, each of them is supporting to deliver digital skills already um, but it's at a very small scale so we need more funding to be unlocked um, so that we can scale uh, the increase of this impact and work that we're already doing in several regions and also even move into more regions of Tanzania. Yes, thank you. Do you think those clubs were enough? Uh uh, I doubt. Uh, at least, that's at least, we are at 50%, uh, right? Yeah? Um, there is a way that we can count. I want to see if people know how to, how to count. I want us to give her uh, 321 clubs. Do we know how to do that? 321, I hear yes and no. I think we all went through primary school and we know how to count, right? So 321 will clap three times, then two, then one. So let's go all together. One, two, three. It's as simple as that, 321. Uh, thank you, Diana, for a very, very informative and uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, personally, I enjoyed listening, and I was really hoping that she will use her time uh, effectively because I was feeling bad to stand up and come and uh, tell her time is up. So <laughs> thank you for managing time. I, uh, from her presentation, there was a lot of things that I took out of it, but one was very interesting. Um, say, in Tanzania, it's a place that we experience all industrial revolutions. <laughs> we have the first, the second, the third, and the fourth at the same time. I think we are, most of us are aware of that. I uh, would share, as I mentioned earlier, I am a lecturer at the Institute of Accountancy Arusha. And uh, one of my best characteristics, I believe uh, some of my students are here as well, I like to teach first year students, and specifically I love to teach certificate students for several reasons. I think it also comes with the personality. Now, um, I teach computer applications, and here is when you start introducing someone to what is a computer. Now, in a class of let's say 100 students, you have uh, f uh, maybe 20 students who seem to be very much aware about computers and they can work their way through the computer. Then you have another maybe 50 or 60 students who have an idea of what a computer is. Maybe they saw it at the bank or somewhere, or maybe they managed to use it once in their lifetime. And then you have this person who is struggling with the mouse. There's a time kulikuwa na a certain advert on TV, what walikuwa na fundishwa computer kwenye ubao, inachorwa. He in the mouse. I think we, we all experience that. But also I had another, uh, another tech. Um, she, to she talked about uh, the youth and um, she said we should identify. Which youth are you talking about? I think that was also a question to me. <laughs> and uh, she said we should meet youth where they are. In the morning we had uh, Professor Ilemani Sedoyeka here uh, giving us the experience of uh, the Institute of Accountancy Arusha. And uh, with the same examples as I've been using when I, I train students in my class. Now this day I was, I was trying to explain how to use Microsoft Word. So you're trying to talk about the goodness of Microsoft Word and you feel like the class is so tense na kila mwanafunzi anakuangalia kama hakuelewi unafanya nini pale mbele. Sasa mimi I'm a kind of a facilitator who likes to interact. So next I decided to change the subject. 
nikazima projector nikazima kila kitu alafu nikaanza kuambia let's talk about whatsapp hebu niambie kuhusiana na status tunatumiaje status i think you can imagine how the, the, the class turned around so i could really connect to what she was saying uh, following the youth online but also, uh, as I was referring to Professor's presentation, since Professor joined the Institute of Accountancy Arusha, there have been a significant increase in the number of students. But one of the contributing factors is the use of social media. I think most of us are following IAA pages on social media. So that is where the youth are. So we decided to follow them where they are. So I won't take much of your time, but at this moment I wish to welcome the next presenter. Uh, this is Dr. Salome Maro, and uh, she'll be taking us through the tech gender gap. Um, I think she has a lot to share on this particular angle. Welcome, Salome. Uh, first, let's see if the projector works. Yes, it does. And then we set the timer. Good. So thank you very much for this opportunity. My name is uh, Dr. Salome Maro. I'm from the University of Dar es Salaam and uh, College of Information and Communication Technologies. So before I start with my uh, very nice talk today on tech gender gap, I want to make sure that everyone is listening. And if you want to show me that you're listening, you will laugh at the end. If you don't, then you're not listening. So uh, I stole a joke from a, a person I was listening to. And the joke was about a husband and a wife. So the husband died and went to heaven. And at the door, there was this angel who is supposed to let the husband to heaven. And the angel said, you have to answer one question right to get to heaven. And the guy was like, OK, what is the question? And he said, you have to spell love. Ha uh ha, -huh. said, OK, L-O-V-E. And the angel said, welcome to heaven. And the husband went to heaven. And then the angel said, I have to step out for a minute. Can you hold the gate? Oh, no, sorry, this was the wife who died, sorry. And the angel said, uh, told the wife, I have to step out a bit, so uh, stay here. And when the person comes, it's the same drill, you know, ask them to spell something, and then if they get it right, they go to heaven. So the next person who came was now the husband, and he met the wife at the gate. And when the wife heard the voice knocking, hmm, she said, this is my husband. And say, oh, you have to answer one question before you enter. The husband said, okay. And she thought, this guy probably knows how to spell love, yeah? And she said, you have to spell Czechoslovakia. And I think we all know that the husband didn't make it to heaven. <laughs> okay, so uh, this uh, joke has nothing to do with my talk, but just to make sure that we are awake after lunch is very difficult time. So uh, today I'm going to be talking about the tech gender gap. So what is the tech gender gap? So as it suggests, it's just the gap or the difference between the men and women in both using technology solutions, so that are already uh, designed, but also in developing technology solutions. So we've heard a lot of talk about uh, existing solutions and how we can get people to use them. So I will not focus on that a lot today, but rather focus on uh, the gap that exists when uh, um, there is a gap in, in women and not being involved enough when uh, solutions are actually being developed. So how big is this gap? So let's look at some statistics. So here is uh, something from GSM, and I think this is 2019, showing us the access to mobile as well as uh, internet penetration in Africa in general. And the dark blue is uh, uh, men, and uh, light blue is women. So if we try to zoom into Tanzania, we can see that with uh, mobile access, we have around 86% of the men who have access to phones, and then 77% women, so that's not so bad, maybe. And then when it comes to internet, the gap is much larger now, so we have 35% of men who have access to mobile internet, and then 17% of women who have uh, uh, mobile uh, internet, so that's like twice uh, the amount. Uh, if we look at a little bit further uh, statistics, we have this uh, uh, cake that I drew here, which represents the percentage of... Uh, so that represents the percentage of women in education. So 
The first slice is in primary school, where I think the government has done really good, where we have almost 50-50% enrollment, and this is because of all the uh, Shule Zakata that have been built around. We don't have any fees, right? So, and, and this Kuhamasisha uh, uh, that we need to make primary school education mandatory. So there we are achieving almost 50-50%. So the problem starts when we go to secondary school. So we have a lot of dropouts, and. Uh, we have dropouts both in males and females, but when it comes to female, we have a lot more dropouts, so the statistics uh, shrinks. And then if we go to higher education, that's even worse, and it's worse when we only talk about science subjects, so uh, science uh, and uh, technical uh, subjects and mathematics. So we see that in higher learning institutions, we have almost uh, just 24% of women enrolled in uh, STEM-related uh, degrees and maybe um, other uh, levels as well. And if we look at uh, the passing rate, so we know that for you to go to a computer science uh, degree or any IT related degree, you probably need to have physics and mathematics. And here we see there's also a gap in uh, the performance. So we have 23.4% uh, males. Uh, vs 15.9 percent female, and then when it comes to physics, we have 54.4 uh, vs 34.9 in females. So you might wonder, this is a lot of statistics, right? And we can see there is a gap, but what is the problem? So what is the problem of having a, a few women in school? So the first problem is that le this automatically leads to way fewer women in the working sector as well. So uh, there is not a lot of statistics that say how many women are actually working as, uh, in tech positions, in technical positions in, in, in Tanzania, but uh, we have some statistics from other countries. So for example, that picture is a statistic from EU, which says uh, in a team of six, you will find one female, and this we are talking about people taking on technical roles, so developers, designers, architects, and things like that. And then uh, the orange block there is more combined statistics from different countries in, in Africa. Uh, so I think we have Rwanda, Ghana, and, and uh, statistics strictly from University of Dar es Salaam, where we have a range of between 15% to 27% females working in ICT. So this means that because this uh, cake is always shrinking as we go up, when we come to actually uh, the tech industry where we have software companies, uh, we have a lot less women who are working there. So what is the impact of this uh, when it's reflected in products and services? So uh, because uh, women are always on the receiving end of the technology and not as involved when we are creating the technology, we end up having gender biased uh, products. So I will start with a few examples. A very dramatic example is the example about the seatbelt. So I'm not sure how many of you are aware that if I and say my husband get into an accident, same accident, I have a 47% more chance to be seriously injured than he is, and I have a 17% more chance to die than he is. And you might wonder, okay, why? We, it's same uh, car, same type of accident, why should I have a more chance to die than, than a man, right? So the reason is how they do the seatbelt testing, right? So seatbelt testing is done with uh, such kind of dummies or dolls. So we try to create uh, dolls that fit the human shape. And then we put them in the cars, and then we make the cars crash and say, OK, it's safe. But if we can see this is a random picture I pulled from Google, there's two dolls, but none of them is representing a woman there, right? They all look very male. They don't have any breasts, right? Nobody's pregnant there, see? So this, these are the problems, that nobody intentionally designed the seatbelt and say, I want women to die more, but it's because when we are doing the testing, we were not inclusive enough to think, hey, maybe we need to see how a seatbelt will fit if somebody has got breasts, right? Maybe we need to see how a seatbelt would fit if somebody is uh, pregnant. So these are the problems, that because women are more on the receiving end, we have this so it's called unconscious bias that goes into products, and in the end, the products can be fatal to, uh, to the other gender. And um, so I was looking up this, and it seems like this must be something very old people know, that uh, the, the, the seatbelt is not as safe for women, so there must be a lot of stuff done to make this safer. 
But the reality is no. So in 1971 was the first time that uh, uh, CAR started uh, this kind of testing with dolls. But it was until 2001 that somebody thought, hey, maybe we need to create a female uh, doll. And even when they created one, very few car manufacturers test this on the driver's seat. So it's always tested on the passenger seat or on the back seat, which means we're still not addressing that maybe there's as much women driving the car as men, right? So problems like that. So I, I started with this example because it, it's easy to, to relate to and it's something that can lead to, you know, to fatal things. But how does this translate to IT-related right? examples? So um, let's look at some uh, ICT-related examples. Something went wrong. Yeah, but ICT-related examples. So uh, mobile apps. Now we are depending a lot on mobile apps for many things. They track our footsteps, our heart rates, our uh, movements and everything. So here is a case from one uh, app from uh, the UK where you have a, a diagnosis app where you fill in what your symptoms are. So you can say maybe I have a headache and then uh, my headache comes with fever or something like that and then you get a diagnosis of what might be wrong with you. So here we have two cases. The first one uh, wrote that I'm um, a 59 year old smoker and I have chest pain in the center of the chest. And the app suggested that, oh, you might uh, either be depressed or you're having a panic attack. And then we have a similar person who did uh, the same. And, and so it's the same symptoms. I'm a 59-year-old smoker, and I have chest pains in the center of the chest. And here, the app recommended, hey, I think you're going to have a heart attack. And here, the, the treatment is very different. For the first case where it's either depression or panic attack, the suggestion is that you need to book an appointment with somebody that you can talk to, and if it's a panic attack, maybe you need to relax, you know, sit down, don't walk until it passes. But if it's a heart attack, the suggestion is you need to go to the hospital immediately or get someone to take you to the hospital. So you can imagine like how a person would react differently if they're given these two diagnoses. And the difference between these two is that the first one was female and the second one was male. So this was a big case. And if you Google it, you see a lot of news about it and people debating whether it's gender bias or intentional or not. But the reason behind this was the data that you use to train such algorithm because there's AI behind saying, okay, if it's this symptom and this symptom and these symptoms, these are, uh, and this gender, this might be a depression or something like that. So it's the biasness in the data that was used to train the app that made it not detect a heart attack in the women's side, but detect that maybe it could be a heart attack on, on the man's side. Uh, um, and here uh, with the apps, I want to say that it's not only with the, how they can recommend uh, fatal things, but it's also how the apps are designed. So if you download a fitness app for a man, the focus is always on uh, how to get more active, how to be more fit, you know, but if you download a female, uh, an app just for female, the focus shifts like, oh, uh, how to be more beautiful and things like that. But we all want to be fit, right? So this uh, gender biasness is, is present in a lot of uh, applications and not because someone intentionally did it, but they didn't have this uh, gender lens when they created uh, the apps. So another example is on the gender biasness in AI applications, right? So a doctor is always assumed to be a man, while a nurse is always assumed to be female. But why? Nobody did this intentionally, right? But the data that you use to train probably have a lot of doctors that are men and less um, female, and you have a lot of nurses that are female. So we need to uh, always be thinking uh, about this gender uh, angle when we are developing applications so that we don't end up with applications that are actually uh, gender bi biased. Uh, last example, I think, I got like a million of these examples. So here is a virtual reality, right? So we know that if you're uh, in virtual reality, you put on some headsets and then you see like a different world in that. So uh, in order for you to be able to see things properly and not to get uh, sick, so you can get sick from the, uh, from the headset. So if it's something, if it, for example, if you're visualizing like a roller coaster that goes like this, you can get dizzy and some people even puke, like it's like you're in a car, right? So in order for you to reduce this sickness, it's called, I think, VR uh, sickness, you need to align the, I think, I hope I can pronounce this word, interpopulary distance, that's the distance between your, your eyes, 
with uh, this uh, headset. Now the problem is that most of these headsets are designed for a typical male head, which is much bigger compared to a female, male, uh, female head. So if I put this on, I cannot get this alignment with my eyes, and suddenly I get sick because you know it's, it's not properly aligned. But it's not that somebody intentionally did this, it's just it was a team of men who designed this thing, and maybe their first testers were all men, and they took the average and created this device. So there's many examples with smartwatches that look like, you know, not like this, but rather, you know, we all know the smartwatches, right? They're more uh, male uh, versions than uh, female versions. So uh, a lot of uh, examples, but what I'm getting at is that this underrepresentation of women uh, when technology or services are being created leads to products that are gender biased, either uh, uh, conscious bias or subconscious biasness, right? So we create products, we create services, and we even create policies that are gender biased, right? So um, the question is uh, a lot of problems, a lot of complaining from me, but what can we do? So how can we actually make this situation better? So there's two uh, parts of the coin. So there's the long-term plan, right? So remember, uh, the first thing I mentioned is that uh, this, when it comes to education, the slice of women as you go up keeps decreasing, right? So we can't just uh, suddenly wake up and say, hey, you need to hire 50% more programmers who are females. You will ask, where am I going to get this? So the long-term plan is we need to build this capacity from, from down there, right? So first of all, we need to motivate girls when they're young to take uh, more STEM subjects so that they're eligible for uh, ICT courses when they come to the university. And then we need, of course, to create awareness uh, programs so we can uh, do this uh, motivation either through role models or awareness uh, programs where they are introduced to uh, ICT at uh, uh, a younger age and also bringing uh, uh, people who have worked in ICT and are females and trying to say, hey, you know what? You can make a difference if you take a STEM subjects because uh, one of the things you could be could be a computer scientist, you could be a software engineer or uh, anything like that. So in this uh, task of role models, uh, so, sorry. So, of course, we also need to formulate gender uh, sensitive ICT policies that will uh, have a specific um, parts that are talking about how do we actually motivate women that are, in the end, they end up in ICT policies. We need to rethink our hiring processes, right? And in hiring processes, uh, one of the things that I read about was that. In IT, we have a lot of, of reference hiring, right? I know this guy who can code, I know this guy who can code. This works very well for men, but it disadvantaged women who are fewer and cannot you know, recommend each other uh, as much as, as the men can. And of course, we need to make the workplace that the few women work in to be more inclusive so that they can uh, stay there. So yes, so one of the uh, things that we need to think about is how, how can we raise more female role models that we can uh, uh, show to the young uh, generation that you can be female and you can uh, be really good at ICT. So I thought about, okay, here we have a really big group of uh, ICT professionals, probably everyone in the country that matters is here. So, my question to you is, if uh, you can name at least three female role models in IT. Anyone? Yes, Dr. Lunko? Salome. <laughs> I wish. But uh, if the question was if you can name three male role models, then we would hear Max Zuckerberg, right? Everyone would mention that guy, we would hear Elon Musk, we would hear, you know, so many names. But it's not that there's no female uh, uh, people who've created tech companies that have succeeded. Maybe they're not as big as Facebook, but they exist. And the problem is because the society is always talking about Mark Zuckerberg, it makes us think that, okay, maybe for me to create something as big as Facebook, I have to be a man, you know? But they are out there, and I was thinking I would uh, educate uh, us today. So first, we have very old uh, scientists. So the first programmers were women, right? 
So when computer science was starting, all the first uh, good programmers were women. So we have uh, uh, Margaret uh, Hamilton, who actually was involved in creating the software that uh, launched the uh, Apollo uh, spaceship that landed in the moon, not the one that failed, you know, not the one that crashed, the one that actually landed in the moon. The team of software programmers were led, was led by a woman. And then we have Ada Lovelace, who was also the first computer programmer. We have uh, Grace uh, Hopper as well. So these are, I think two of them are from US, one is from uh, uh, UK. But this is what we always get when we hear about computer science. We all oh, these old people and we say, maybe it's no longer for women, but we still have uh, current people who are making a difference in IT. So uh, the brains behind Cisco, the routers that we love so much is a woman, so Sandy Leitner. And then VMware, I think everyone here has used uh, VMware uh, somehow. That's also a woman, but lynda.com, for those of us who are old enough, before YouTube was putting on free tutorials, I think most of us learned a lot of design uh, uh, via videos from lynda.com, at least I did. But that's also a woman. So what I'm trying to get us here is uh, whenever we are talking about ICT or introducing ICT to these young people, even though we have great examples of males who are around, we should always remember to mention these uh, women so that the, the, the young people we are talking about actually get an idea that, oh, you don't have to be a man to, to be this uh, great. Okay, so I talked about uh, uh, sh uh, long-term plans which involve uh, uh, getting uh, more women uh, in the education sector from uh, below to, uh, so that we can have a lot more women graduating in uh, ICT areas. But what about now? What can we do now? So what we can do now is to ac actively uh, encourage diversity. So the first one is through hiring more diverse technical teams. And here a, a person will again say, where am I going to find these seven programmers to include in my team of 20, right? But you don't have to always look for programmers when you're creating a software, right? We have people who will help you in your requirements engineering. We have designers, we have analysts, architects you can find women who can uh, make your team more diverse. Uh, we should also uh, create tech solutions that, uh, with all genders in mind. So even though we know that uh, this team of people who created VR, maybe it was only men who tested, if somebody was thinking about gender at that time, they would say, hey, why don't we find a few uh, ladies so that we can see if this also works. And of course, we need to uh, uh, involve uh, a lot of females in testing. And with testing, I mean uh, first pre, right? When the app, if you're creating an app, for example, before it launches, but afterwards. And here I think uh, people from statistics will agree that we need to collect gender disaggregated data. So when you're analyzing your usage, for example, you can't say, oh, my app is really lagged, but there's only these uh, 10 people who don't like it. But if you have gender disaggregated uh, data, you can tell, hmm, it's 90% of the women who don't like my app, and maybe you need to change the features somehow, or maybe you need to add more features to make it more uh, inclusive. Uh, we have some guides uh, from UNICEF where they actually publish uh, how to include girls in digital product user testing. So they have similar in how to include uh, uh, girls in uh, uh, requirements uh, gathering, creating of, of uh, products that make them more uh, gender neutral or gender inclusive. Uh, another thing that we can do on short term is that, uh, as I said, we have very few women who are working in the ICT sector, especially in the technical roles. But I found these uh, statistics, again, it's, uh, it's not explicitly from Tanzania, but it says that 50% of women leave the ICT careers by the age of 35. So if we struggle so much uh, to, to get to, uh, to the top uh, where we go to universities and we actually get our ICT degrees, why do we live so much when we go to work? Well, because they, in the workplace is again a male-dominated area and uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, workplace, I don't want to say abuse, but rather uh, toxic workplaces that make it not so comfortable for women to work. And in the end they say, ah, what am I doing here? I'd rather go uh, take an MBA instead of a master's in computer science so that I can do something in business maybe where there's a lot, a lot more women. So while we are struggling to increase the number of women in ICT, we should also struggle to retain those who pursue until they uh, end up in, in ICT. 
And how can we do this? First of all, we should promote fair wages. So there is a really uh, difference in, in terms of fair when it comes to uh, men and women in ICT but also recognition and respect in the work, uh, workplace. So I say take them serious, right? So if you hire me as a developer and I come to the company, you should give me development work, right? So there is a guy who did some research, he's called uh, Paychex in 2018, and he writes that uh, female technology employees are often asked to take responsibilities for other jobs related to their gender, right? So you are hired as a programmer, and then when you go there, you will say, hey, can you go and receive those guests? Uh, how about uh, designing this material here that we can use you know, to sell our product? If you hire me as a, a developer, then I want to be given development work because maybe I worked so hard to get where, where I am today. So we should really try to motivate those who pursued until they, they got here because otherwise we are also demotivating those and it will not make a lot of sense to you know, encourage them to come and when they come the environment does not support uh, them to stay. Okay, so uh, all the gaps I've been talking about have been uh, about gender, and since I'm female, I might as well be very biased, right? So I thought I would add something else. So gender gap is not the only gap that exists in technology. We have other gaps as well that exist that we need to constantly be thinking about as we create and design uh, different products, different uh, services, and different uh, ICT-related policies. So for example, we should always uh, think of other minority and disadvantaged groups. So for example, the disabled peoples, I'm sure they have a lot to complain about, right? So imagine if I'm a woman complaining about a seatbelt because it doesn't have breasts. Think about somebody who doesn't have legs, how much they have to complain about the seatbelt, right? So, uh, we should always think about uh, the entire population when we are creating uh, products. We should think about the elders as well. Can this uh, application be useful in, in, of, uh, for people in all ages? What about children? And all other minority groups that we can think about. So we should always uh, try to be as inclusive as possible. So uh, as I wind up, I want uh, us to uh, think about this quote from somebody called Scott Page. So he says that if people think alike, no matter how smart they are, they most likely will get stuck at the same locally optimal solutions. Innovating requires thinking differently. That's why diversity powers innovation. So no matter what kind of product you're developing, if you can have a more diverse team, I guarantee you, your product will be way more innovative than if you have only people who think uh, alike. Thank you so much. I will end here. Wow, I feel so honored to be moderating such an uh, interesting session. And I believe all the credit comes to me, right? <laughs> Thank you so much for a very, very wonderful uh, presentation. I was trying to, th to see if uh, anyone was overthinking and uh, trying to knock ahead. But I didn't see anyone experiencing that. So thank you so much. It was, it was a great presentation. The great take from this presentation is uh, inclusion. Inclusion, inclusion, inclusion. In uh, some of her statistics, uh, I quoted 50% of women leave their ICT careers by age of 35. That was very interesting to me because I can also share a personal experience. Um, I did uh, advanced diploma in information technology. Then I went for masters in information technology and management. Then after that, I started rethinking my career, feeling that I did not fit in the ICT world. I later came to learn that what I was experiencing, it was not only me, but several women are experiencing the same. And sometimes we, we could refer it to as uh, in imposter syndrome you feel some, somehow as if you don't belong. But then um, later, 
with attending several conferences and uh, speaking to people. But before that, I, I even did a, a decision, and uh, I went for a second master's degree, and I studied master's in community economic development. <laughs> so I was about to quit ICT. But um, being in the ecosystem, meeting people encouraged me a lot, and now I'm pursuing PhD in information and communication science engineering. <laughs> So this statistic is really shocking. And I think as much as we sit and encourage girls in school to go for STEM uh, careers, we should also do the same for women. And uh, this is not um, talking on the feminine side and just trying to say our rights and uh, coming up and uh, banging everywhere. She gave very vivid examples, and we could see um, the situation and at hand. And most of the time, it is just gender blindness, nothing else. So thank you so much. Now, uh, before I uh, welcome the floor for uh, Q&A session, uh, when uh, Ms. Diana was making her presentation, she recognized the presence of uh, partners who helped in um, coming up with the report that she presented. So I would like to hear something from the partners that are seated right here in front of me. Uh, could I get a mic on the, okay, they have mics with them. So do I get a volunteer to, to say something, comment on the report, uh, put your perspective on it? Yeah, we could start with Faraja, welcome. Thank you so much, um, Pam, and thank you, Salome and Diana, for such an insightful uh, presentation. I am Faraja Kotanyalandu from Shula Direct and Dr. Hub. And just coming from that presentation, I would also like to share a personal story. So when Vodacom was opening up their M-Pesa API, I'm assuming some of you were there on that day. So the event took place at the Kilimanjaro Hyatt uh, Hotel in Dar es Salaam in their ballroom. And I remember we, we were invited as Shula Direct. We create digital educational platforms on web and mobile um, using, uh, using web and mobile technologies. And we were invited because we are partners with Vodacom uh, through the M-Pesa uh, integration for the API. And I remember walking in, and for a second, I thought I had walked in into a gentleman's business club. <laughs> they had invited CEOs of, of tech companies and enterprises. And I think there are over 100 people in that room, or maybe close to 150 people. And there are only about eight CEOs of tech enterprises in that room, including myself. And that was very shocking. And it was weird because I couldn't even see the people. Then they were somewhere at the back. And then they were wavering, like, hey, we're on this side. And then I was, and of course, I, I knew all of them because being like a niche, we're almost like a niche in terms of um, the, the human resource within the sector. We know each other and it takes a lot of peer-to-peer uh, -peer support what Pam is saying in terms of supporting each other and, and encouraging each other. But that led us to establish Dr. Hub. So my co-founder is actually a computer scientist. I am not. <laughs> um, I fell in love with tech and I pursued and work in technology. And we started a side project coming from that experience, mainly because we thought we could give back and encourage and train and support young women entrepreneurs to also work in technology. So we had few people coming into our office in the evening and we would mentor them, we would coach them, which seemed to be like more like, for us it was more like a pastime, like a side project. And eventually it became a full-fledged program, which we integrated into Shula Direct to train and support women in business and personal development to enable them to start their enterprises, but then grow them to become sustainable. 
we quickly realized most women do not want to pursue technology because again, it's, it's, it doesn't give you instant results. Unlike when you trade, for example, it, it's, it's a, it's a long sum game. You have to do a lot of iterations. You have to do, to be patient with your clients. You even have to ensure they adopt your platform through behavior change campaigns, for example. And so, we quickly realized that for Ndoto Hub, I mean for Ndoto at that point was just a side project, for Ndoto to actually thrive, we need to create a separate program which will focus on entrepreneurship for young women, focusing on their personal and business development, but being sector agnostic. So not necessarily focusing on tech, but focusing on all sectors, but encouraging them to use tech as a channel, what Diana was saying, as a mechanism to develop and support their businesses. So two and a half years later, we've had over 300 young women entrepreneurs trained through Ndoto Hub in Dar, and we've just opened a branch here in Arusha. So now we have Ndoto Hub Dar in Arusha. And our mission is the same. We are only focused on young women. We're focused on supporting them to make money, and we want them to also think of their social impact in the community. So young women make money, achieve the desired impact in your community. That is Ndoto Hub. And our slogan says Anzan and Ndoto because we believe every person has a dream and we're here to support them to fulfill their potential. Thank you so much. Thank you, Faraja. And um, uh, maybe I would, uh, I could also, uh, before I invite uh, another partner to contribute or say something, Tunaruhusiwa kutumia lugha zote. Unajua nimeongea mpaka huku kuna uma eh? Lugha ilikuja na meli jamani. Naomba nikaribishe uh, mwingine from among the partners. Asante. Kwa majina naitwa Gibson Kawago, ni manager wa kituo cha sayansi STEM Park Tanga. Just to take back to the report, wakati tunafanya TYDS forum pare tanga swali la kwanza ambalo lilikuwa linakuja tulikuwa tunafundisha kuhusu digital opportunities na watu wengi wanaposikia digital opportunities wanaona ni kufanya biashara ya mtandaoni alafu pia kuna kitu ambacho kina circulate nafikiri tunyoshe mkono kama iki kitu tumewe kutana nacho zina pita link ambazo unakwambia bonya hapa alafu utapata dola mia, bonya hapa utapata dola mia mbili. tumeshawahi kuiona hiyo Yes, kwa hiyo na hiyo tunabonya. Na tunabonya na tunajaza zile form na unaambiwa share kwenye magrupu, ukishare kwenye magrupu 20 na tosha au watu 100 basi tuna share na mwisho wa siku tunakuta tupati tunachotaka. Kwa hiyo stating from that problem tukaja kuona kwamba ni vijana wengi sana wanapenda hela za haraka. Na wanapokuja kwenye mtandao na hizi linki zinavyosikuleti ni kwamba hela za haraka zinaonekana zinaweza kupatikana lakini let me tell you behind those links uh, there are people who are IT techs ambao wanatengeneza websites ambazo ili kupata hela wana apply kwenye Google Ads halafu matangazo wanakuwa natokea. Lakini anakuta content ya nayo post watu wawezi kuja. Kwa how to get traffic, traffic. Anatengeneza link kama zile ambazo zitawadanganya watu kwamba bonya hapo upate dola mia. The moment umebonya ukiangalia ile link na kuli direct you to other places. Halafu ukisha land kwenye website yake kwanza anapata traffic. Kwa hiyo anaweza kaenda kuomba ta sponsorship kwenye mtandao kwa mfano Vodacom wapi anamwambia okay website yangu ni hii kwa mwezi wanaangalia watu milioni moja. Kwa hiyo you can give me ads alafu na mtaweza kuwafikia hawa watu. Lakini in real sense ye ndo anaenda kutengeneza pesa. Lakini pia kuna ads za Google ambazo zinatokea ye anapata pesa. Kwa hiyo sisi ambao tunawaza kupata hela ya uraisi hatuipati lakini yule aliyetumia akili anakuja kuipata. Kwa hiyo we had to sit down na wale ambao wamekuja kwenye summit Alafu tukauliza what else do you think of digital opportunities wakasema kufanya biashara mtandaoni specific Instagram na Facebook na WhatsApp lakini tukaja okay how can we help them within a summit ya one week we can't train them the whole package lakini tukawatengenezea summary kwamba uh, from the start they don't have a way ya kutengeneza matangazo kumtafuta mtu kutengeneza matangazo they have to pay a lot of money kwa hawezi kwa hiyo we introduce them to Canva where you can create ads na zina look very professional na it's a free platform kwa hiyo tukawafundisha na wakaweza kufahamu lakini when it comes to Instagram we told them how to write Instagram bios 
and how to post posts that will attract customers. Because most of us tuna post post ambayo ina caption in there from bio. In fact, at me if I look at it, I can't I can't read. Like you can write a summary ambayo hata ambayo ya jasoma, I can just preview and I can okay, this is an overview, this is what you do, I think I can purchase something from you. Like in the hardest thing is that people need followers. You need to have followers in order to have clients. Even people are going now to buy followers to, they think that they can get clients, but those both followers are not clients. So you have 10K with 10 people liking and looking at your post. So we had to take them back, how can you run ads? Running Instagram ads, the main problem that Tuliona wanaipata ni kwamba wengi hawana e MasterCard, or they don't know how to do online payments. Because we had to teach them, okay, you can't go to the bank, kufungua account, and they will see, in case we give them instructions, then a procedure and F, they don't do. Because to come here, an easy way, uh, there is M-Pesa, I think, and Airtel, who offers a MasterCard. You can just create it. Ukisha tengeneza, unapata card number, CSV number, expired date, alafu unareka pesa, alafu unarun ads. Kwa tukafundisha, tukaona, okay, with the sample ambao tulikuwa nayo, they, ve they were very quick to catch up with the method ambao tulitumia kuafundisha with real examples. Then at the end, tukaja kuona kwamba these youths ambazo wapo everywhere, we can create programs sata kwenye YouTube channels, kwamba an easy way to give them tutorials, how to do all those stuffs. And most of the times, if you give a tutorial for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, no one is going to watch. We just keep and see what is the point at the beginning, what is the point at the end. So an easy way also we found, walikuja pia ambao anatamani kutengeneza YouTube channels. So we told them, okay, this is a problem statement. Kwamba watu wengi wajui jinsi ya kufanya. Lakini when you are creating a solution, look at what if you could be given that solution. Could you use it? Tukaona wengi in case they could get two minutes tutorial, one minute tutorial with summaries they could follow up. And if, if you have questions, they can ask in the comments. So we told them how to create YouTube channels, how to make those tutorials, and using just their normal mobile phones. Then speaking to the gender part, tukaja kuona... Uh, wa sichana ama wa toto wa kike wengi hawapati opportunity kwenye masomo ya STEM. Ko sisi as Project Inspire, we have different projects. We are starting from, uh, I can't come here now and start inspiring uh, girls ambao tayari wamesha grow up. At some point, wanaza kwa wamesha give up, wamesha pigwe na maisha, wanaona, ah, hapa ngoja nifanya nacho kitaka. Kwa hiyo, we found that it is very best to start with them from a younger age. Kwa hiyo at Project Inspire we have a program ambayo tunawa inspire watoto kuanzia nursery mpaka darasa la saba how to do stem subjects in, in an easy way starting from an example acid base uh, reaction sisi tumekuja kufanya form 4 na most of the times unakuta kwenye maabara tunaitwa tu ile wiki jayo mtihani basi mwalimu atawapiga brush wiki ya mwisho ile na kesho kuna pepa basi mtapata some hints alafu mtaanza kufanya but for them we starting with them like uh, acid you can take vinegar base you can take baking powder you can do the same reaction you can get the results but in a, in a fun way dealing with acid and base ukichukua concentrated na ukaja kufundisha primary automatically you keep precaution don't touch they will touch so we found, or we looked for easy ways to safely teach them STEM. Then when they grow up, reaching to secondary school uh, level, we have boot camps. Now we have taught them from the start. They are grown-ups. They can now start their own projects and uh, initiate different uh, projects that they think they can grow up with. Go to na annual STEM youth boot camps. Ambao, in fact, even now, uh, wanafunzi, ambao wapo secondary shule zote wana apply through our website and in December we'll have a camp that will involve 70 uh, secondary school students. What do we do in the camps? Uh, we have a week where they come and they be taught how to uh, write business proposals, how to grow up their business ideas and at the end of the week Au wanafunzi ambao wanakuja, kila moja wanakuja na project idea ambao wanataka kuifanya. Then we help them how to write proposals na wana compete. Wakisha compete, then yule atakaya shinda na wale watakao onyesha uwezo kwamba wanaelekea. We help them how to structure it and to come up with the product. A real example, I'm in Arusha now and our offices are in Da. In Arusha, we had a boy called Edgar Edmund. 
the CEO and founder of Green Venture Tanzania ambayo ipo kule na nenane. Yeah. What they do, alikuja kwenye bootcamp akiwa na idea kutengeneza paving blocks kwa kutumia plastic. Kwa hiyo go around and pick plastic alafu na zimuld na kutengeneza paving blocks. And right now ana kampuni kabisa na sasa hivi upo Marekani anasoma lakini just to say ni kwamba ame graduate from 6 then from there ameenda kusoma university Marekani lakini sasa hivi ameajiri watu pale ambao sasa hivi wanatengeneza mbao za plastiki ambazo hata in some areas hata Serengeti anawauzia wanatengeneza viti kwa ajili ya kukalia kule na haviwezi kuharibika msimu wa mvua kwa hiyo with you. growing up with them uh, it gives us an initiative that we all right now here have to go back and start dealing with these younger ones and especially girls and making sure that they go and grow in STEM. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution, uh, a very inspiring contribution. Lakini kwa kupitia contribution yake ni tukumbushe wote. Nikiangalia hapa wengi wetu sisi ni wazazi. Na hawa watoto na vijana tunao waongelea, ni sisi ndio tunao walea na kuwakuza. Na pale vingu wengi wakishika, watoto wakishika simzetu, tunawashia nini? Faraja anasema tunawashia shule direct. Is it true? Tunawapa two games, ndio? Eh, kuna kuna uh, some games that could be training mtoto kwenye programming. So there are so many other things ambazo kabla hatuja, hatujaenda kwenye hizi hubs na innovation centers. Sisi wenyewe kama wazazi, what is our responsibility? Sisi tumejifunza programming, tumejifunza a lot of tech, tulvofika chuoni. How much are we sharing with our kids? How much are we training them kwanzia kwenye lower level? Uh, so I know there are a lot of partners here who would like to share uh, their contribution with respect to the report that was presented. Lakini ni naomba tuende kwa audience kidogo. Let's also welcome the audience kwa wale wenye maswali, wenye comments. I see one hand up. The second. Asante. Um, kwa majina naitua Jacqueline Buana. Um, also a part of Partners Wadot from Tautik, Morogoro. And I've been a part of Tanzania Youth Digital Summit 2020-2021. Ko nime kuepo, nimeona. I'm also a part of the research data collection na kila kitu. Kuna semu ambao ningependa kuizungumzi ambayo na hisi kwamba tunaiweka pembeni. So kila kitu ambacho kimezungumziwa ni kizuri. But uh, kuna data tuliziona jana kwamba kila mwaka kuna waitimu milioni moja wanaitimu kutoka vyuo vikuu na vya kati. Lakini kati ya hao wote ni laki mbili tu wanachukuliwa kwenye kuajiliwa katika um, sekta maalum in the formal sector. Wanaobaki wote wanabaki mitaani. And Katika hao milioni moja wapi wana, wangapi wako kwenye IT ama IT related hatufahamu lakini kuna sectors nyingi 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 sana and mimi kwa miongoni mwao mimi nimesoma uchumi I'm an economist but we should also consider where the world is going in the fourth industrial revolution kwamba the job market inahusisha dunia nzima um in 80 days I'll be are celebrating my two years um, work anniversary. I'll be work I've been working with a US-based um, company, which is the I can say a worldwide startup. And I started working with them after graduating, before my graduation, and I got this opportunity. Like I met with the CEO of the company, and she really liked me, and she employed me. I was very lucky. I can say that. But I'm in Tanzania and I'm working with a US-based company, delivering my responsibilities every day. So how many young people are there in Tanzania and they can be also working with other companies all over around the world? So, kustusifikilia tu kwamba ICT, tuwafundishe ICT na nini, lakini tunawatu wamejifunza vitu vingi sana, watu wamejifunza 
um, accounting, finance, and everything. But since there are no employment opportunities here in Tanzania, they can also be employed in other countries in the world. With the fourth industrial revolution, with the computers and technology that we have, we should also think about that. Kwa sababu, hawa tiyalu wamesha enda kwenye njia nyingine ambayo siyo ICT. Um, hawa kusoma um, developments, coding, na vitu kama hivyo. Lakini, they have skills, Could you they have knowledge. Could please? Summarize? Yes. Thank you. So, I think um, that it's about time that we think how we are going to um, also help them use the knowledge that they have um, in saving the world. Thank you. Um, um, digital gap kama alivyo presenti Dr. Salome na niongelea kwa sisi wazee kwa sababu ya meongelea wanawake tu wanawake tu all, all over ya yeah. <coughs> um, kwa sasa hivi all the programmers we have the challenge ya new technologies and sometimes we can keep up with the current technologies especially these technologies are APIs um takuta kwamba um, unatakiwa kwa mfano tuseme mimi kujotolea mfano nimesoma Pascal programming uh, lakini sasa hivi natakiwa nifundishe darasa na wanafunzi wangu GitHub APIs and all this lakini uh, ukiunganisha na zile presentation za nyuma zote ya ya Shakil uh, ya ya Iga uh, ni kwamba hautakuta hata kipande kimoja yani ile classes eh? Shakila ametuambia you can make a business kwenye uh, internet ndio. Kwa programmers wetu wanafikiria content labda ni kwa watu ambao si wa computer lakini actually they need to create content for us. My students are going on Udemy. Udemy ni platform fulani ambayo unapata kind of classes yani simple simple classes ambazo unakuta watu wanajifunza. Kuna a lot of template, kuna a lot of frameworks, a lot of uh, APIs lakini kwa a programmer Tanzania hata kama ata download open source products akaongeza kinukta pale hauwezi kukuta kwamba akakishare and they don't share kabisa kwa hiyo hautakuta hata sehemu moja kuna script mimi i need a script i don't know uh, wanatupa api guideline and all this uh, na waangalia hapa usijua kaninyonyo kwenye kiti lakini <laughs> <laughs> lakini api guideline is fine lakini kwa mtu anayejua ku program mimi sijui ku program give me a piece and classes eh? So kwa nini kama basi hawawezi ha, 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 kushare open source even though they are making a lot of use of open source um basi wangefungua hata YouTube waka make kama market wanauza zile clips zao like this is how to integrate GPG this is how to integrate in HIF this is how to integrate TRA because sasa hivi ukiangalia kwa mfano EFD sasa hivi na phase out i think it's za mwaka mmoja tu kwa sababu ukiangalia eh, sheria ya TRA na EFD is completely different mfano ukitoa invoice unatakiwa hapo hapo toe receipt. Sasa kama na, natumia device ya EFD natoa invoice leo napokea hera na zunguruka nayo miezi mitatu baadaye nakuja kutoa receipt. But if it is integrated in API there's no way this doesn't happen immediately una generate invoice na tengeneza receipt pale pale. So ukiangalia okay. shida zinakukwenda API is a deal. Lakini uh, my appeal ni kwamba uh, young programmers na hile ndo gap wanaosema Salome pale kwamba hawatushirikishi kwenye kwenye new technologies ya yeah. declare interest amini uh, evangelist open source na kwa sasa na chair free, uh, phosphor uh, free and open source for africa asante asante kwa mchango wako uh, nadhani uh, okay uh, kuna mkono kule nyuma Uh, ni, 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 ku, ni kushukuru kwa sababu umewakilisha wengi. <laughs> Karibu. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Lilian Muze. Nitashukuru kama tukitumia na Kiswahili pia. No. Asante. Natokea Isaka Tanzania chapter ni business development coordinator there. So I'm not an ICT person, but nilipocheki program nikaona topic ya Dr. Salome inaongelea gender gap in technology so i was impressed nikaja kusikiliza and one of the uh, points that she mentioned to reduce this gap ameongelea kuhusu ku motivate young girls to pursue uh, these uh, ICT subjects 
ni nilitaka tu kuweka emphasis cause kwamba this uh, hiki tuianzie from the family level i'm one of the person ambaye nilikuwa i'm not saying that uh, arts or business subjects are not good but when i was young one of the things that i wanted to do was easy uh, pcm subject kwa sababu nilikuwa nataka kufanya computer science nikienda chuo lakini my mom was like my parents actually my mom akasema haya mavitu ni magumu sana pcm uwezi kufanya don't do it lakini because i was persistent nikasema nafanya so she has to go to my brother cuz ndo ambaye nilikuwa namsikiliza sana my brother did pcm so my my brother told me ndo ikabidi aje ni convince like uh njoo usifanye hii utateseka go do arts so i had to go and do arts kwa nadhani this is something that as salome has mentioned dr salome has said should start from the family level we should motivate these young girls we should motivate our children wanapokuwa hata na interest tu ya kutaka kufanya this ICT level and one thing that that uh, not only being in ICT level but also to lead departments women to lead these ICT departments or ICT uh, sectors um isaka to to wana she leads technology technology something that i'm very impressed with ambao ni kina encourage women ni wanawake wachache sana wako kwenye leadership ya is technology kwa hiyo ni ku encourage na kuwa mentor tuna encourage na kuwa mentor uh, women ladies to lead this ICT project thank you very much asante ameendelea kutukumbusha uh, majukumu yetu kama wazazi na anachokisema ni kweli tunakutana na easy cases sana hasa tunapokwenda mashuleni tunakutana nao wengi wanakuambia nimeambiwa uko kwenye science mimi sitaweza kwa sababu ni wa kike kwa hiyo tuchukue ilo jukumu na tu, tu, tuchukue nafasi yetu kuendelea kuwajenga watoto wetu uh, kutokana na muda ninaomba nirudishe upande huu nimeona uh, wengi waliochangia walitoa maoni zaidi lakini sijui presenters wangu kama wanacho cha kusema you have anything to respond i think no kwa sababu wanajiuliza uh, which means endelea kujiuliza nitakurudia which means na toa uh, nafasi kwa mtu mmoja kati ya partners uh, karibu john kuna swali okay aha uh -huh. karibu karibu asante Asante sana kwa nafasi hiyo naitwa Sostene Skewe. Nina maswali kwa presenters watatu. Dr. Maro kwa sababu ya profession yako nilikuwa napenda kujua kadiri ya tafiti na uchambuzi leo ufanya ni kwa namna gani hapo chuoni au shuleni katika mitala mnafundisha watu haya maeneo ya msingi problem solving kwa sababu moja ya sababu iliyotukusanyika hapa kwa sababu ya digital vision ni kutatua matatizo so how do you prepare the students to think about problems that are facing the society problems facing the enterprises problems facing the government or anything and how to ascribe meaning to those analytics kwa hiyo ni analytical mindset that you prepare how do you do it whether you do it and how do you do it the second one na muuliza dadangu faraja shule direct um, it's a one of the use cases that i'm familiar with kwa nikuwa nataka kujua experience yako inakuambia nini kwa shule direct especially from the scaling side what would limit what is limiting shule direct to scale we have how many students uh, how many children are going to school and who would require or would benefit from that solution what is limiting scale and what do you need for that scale to happen um upande swali la mwisho ni la wote whoever can respond and i'm saying this because i've heard since yesterday talent 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 yes it takes people 
to drive change transformation yote hii hata kama tuna teknolojia vipi ni watu ambao wanafanya hivyo sivyo jamani pamoja na kama tuna faidi so Sa in the spirit please, just summarize time okay. so the question now in the spirit of the fourth industrial revolution what could be the greatest idea that we need to really focus on to prepare the future labor force and secondly all these ICT digitization require investments what should be the greatest ideas on driving new DNA of entrepreneurship thank you asante uh, naamini waliolizo maswali wame wameandika uh, mahali ninaomba msiajibu sasa nitawarudia mtayajibu wakati tunaendelea ku wind up lakini nina watu wawili katika partners ambao ninaomba niwape uh, dakika mbili mbili tu ninaomba nianze na mtu wa R labs tunaomba utupe experience ya kwenu kidogo kwa 2 minutes thank you so much um, my name is angela ilomo and i am the managing director of R labs tanzania tutashukuru kama utatumia kiswahili mtachanganya <laughs> okay so um kwenye report wameongelea sana kuhusu inclusivity na sisi aina vijana ambao sisi tunawafikia most of them are disadvantaged groups and ukiangalia asilimia sabina sita ni wanawake na most of them are young mothers and the basic income of most of our participants is below the, uh, the national poverty line they earn at least an average of 5000 um, shillings per week which is really low and also um 55 percent wanatumia sim to za kawaida za nani za kiganjani kwa hiyo Unaona kwamba um, vijana ambao sisi tunafikia ni they are very disadvantaged and wana need sana ya ku ya ku increase income lakini pia kuwa financial independent so what we do is uh, we have a program that is aimed in improving their the quality of their life of these young people plus improving their communities and their families by increasing their in their confidence in their income and also the community engagement um, but before that, we didn't have any digital com component in our training. So uh, in partnering with DOT and also the TYDS, we had an opportunity to invite these young people who, with, um, with that, that group of people who are disadvantaged. And they had access to uh, these facilitators who showed them the different opportunities that are there for, um, for them in the digital industry, which is a great experience to them. And um, I think um, as um, a partner who works in a rural area, um, having, I mean, being included in, into this training is actually a great opportunity for us. Thank you. Asante kutoka Ara Labs. Ara Labs wana deal na watu ambao wengi waneza kuwa ni standard seven livers. Yes. Au wengi hata la saba hawajafika. Yeah, so we have 76% um, only uh, have only an S primary school education level so it's more than a third yeah thank you john i'm giving you 2 minutes uh, thank you so much pamela and thank you so much dot and the entire team for their uh, good reports nilikuwa na fry sana kumsikiliza diana until dr salome alipokuja that was very it was very destructive uh, when you report here, dot yes, the quality of the report. I'm, I'm so thankful. And kuna kitu ambacho kimesoje kwenye reporti sana. Kumba two segments pia our youth. So kumba kwa sababu ni we are we are advocating for digital technology and all youth were included in the sandbox. But from my experience, now to na fanya program ni cha digitrade to yanza May. Uh, April this year, but unakuta watu ata zile unashum kamba oke awa tu ana watakuwa na social media pages, but unafika mtu na I don't have. Ama sina email account. Ama sina, you know. So i ikasu fungua kamba. I think now so we have to have their persona for the people that we are targeting. And uh, we learn from those mistakes, uh, lesson, I think, and uh, we improve. Na tuka kabisa zumishisema like, okay, these are the use we are looking for. And uh, results for the digital digitality has been amazing. And now we're expanding to Iringa, uh, working with other hubs there. 
So now we are focusing on, only on agriculture, on how these young people, they can actually use digital tools to grow their business. Asante, John. Uh, thank you so much. Mudasio Rafiki. Ninaomba uh, niende kwa Faraja, then uh, Dr. and uh, Diana. Ninaomba mjibu maswali, lakini hatuna muda uh, mwingi. Kwa hiyo mtajibu kadi utakaveweza, alafu alia uliza swali, anaweza kuja kuwaona baada ya his session, akaendelea kupata uh, a lot from you guys. Karibu Faraja in like one and a half minute. Wow, nitajitahidi. Uh, asante, asante pia kwa swali. Cha kwanza kabisa, uh, teknolojia imetumika kwa matumizi mengi, lakini hajawa kitu, kitu kichutumika kwa matumizi ya elimu. Kwa sisi vako tunaanza shule direct, kwa nijikuwa la kwanza, hasa kwenye upande wa sekta binafsi, kutoa elimu kutumia mtandao. Na likuwa ni kitu kipia. Kwa changamoto kubwa ya kwanza kwenye ukusola kukua au scale up ni behavior change kwa hiyo adoption inakuwa ni inakuwa iko taratibu because kwanza mtu umfanye aamini kwamba anaweza kutumia teknolojia lakini pia ikamfaa kwa ajili ya kujifunza kwa ajili ya kusoma la pili of course ni, ni upande wa kwenye adoption kuna upande wa sekta binafsi lakini pia kuna upande wa upande wa sera upande wa, wa serikali lakini nashukuru pia kwamba kwa sasa hivi kangu alikuepo pale kitali yupo na tumefanya kazi tunafanya kazi kwa karibu sana na wizara ya tehama pia upande wa tamisemi lakini pia taasisi ya elimu Tanzania kwenye kuweza ku, kupata adoption na government by in kufikia mashule mengi lakini pia hata vioni kwenye vyo vya walimu uh, kwa hiyo kwa kuna hiyo gap pia lakini cha tatu ambacho ni cha muhimu sana pia kuna swala la connectivity sio kila sehemu ambayo mtandao upo lakini pia gharama za connectivity sio kila mtu anaweza ka afford kutumia kuwa na bando ambayo anaweza kutumia majukwaa kwa hiyo ndio maana kwa sisi pia ni muhimu sana kuwa na wabia kama makampuni ya simu ambayo anaweza katoa data bure au pengine kuweza kupunguza gharama kurahisisha upatikanaji wa haya majukwaa kwa gharama nafuu. Na kingine of course pia kama 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 biashara nyingine au kama taasisi nyingine yoyote ni kwamba ni muhimu sana watu wafahamu na Tanzania ni nchi kubwa. Na kufikia kila sehemu sio jambo rahisi bila bila kuwa na wabia, bila kuwa na partners. Kwa hiyo sisi tunaamini sana kwenye partnerships, kwenye collaboration ili tuweze kufika sehemu kubwa zaidi. Lakini pia ina gharama. Kwa hiyo pia kuna swala pia la funding na financing kuweza kufika mbali zaidi. Mwisho kabisa mwisho kabisa kuna swala zima la kuweza ku, kuunganisha vitu mbalimbali. Kwa hiyo pia utayari na ufahamu wa mtu kuna swala la digital skills. Mwalimu waweza kufahamu jinsi ya kutumia hii mitandao, mwanafunzi waweza kufahamu jinsi ya kutumia, mzazi waweza kufahamu jinsi ya kutumia. So digital skills, awareness, lakini pia kuna swala pia la kutumia hizi teknolojia ndani ya mifumo rasmi ya shule. Asante. Asante Faraja. Uh, Dr. Salome. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. So I think the question was about uh, what are we doing as a university to make sure that we... Tashukuru kitumia kiswahili. Aha. Nadhani swali lilikuwa eh, sisi kama chuo tunafanya nini ili kufundisha eh, watu wetu ili waweze ku hmm, eh, so that they can support eh, eh, the society so that they can use their <laughs> knowledge to support their society. Nitabadisha taatibu, it's a process, a taatibu. So, cha kwanza as a university, uh, we know that we have field works, right? So we try as much as possible to collaborate with companies so that we get our students uh, going to companies during field work. But also in teaching, we adapt uh, something called a uh, change-driven education, where you try to teach from a problem perspective. So you try uh, to teach, and this is mostly for postgraduate students, where we have uh, students doing masters and PhD, and where the topics are real challenges that come from uh, uh, either companies or government institutions. So we have uh, such kind of arrangements where we uh, collaborate with uh, mashirika mbali mbali, mashirika serikali sana sana, kwa ajili ya kujaibu kwa identify matatizo yao, ili sisi huko tunapokuja kuwa na PhD za masters wafanye research kwenye vitu ambavyo mwisho wa siku vinaweza vikatumika kwenye societies zetu. Of course kuna movement ya, ya kupush eh, kufanya eh, mabadiliko kwenye mitaala vile vile ili tuweze kuwa current na tuweze kuwa tuna produce watu ambao mwisho wa siku wanaweza wakasaidia kwenye society.
si nimefanya Kiswahili. Asante. <laughs> Asante lakini uh, ninataka hapo hapo uongeze neno moja la ku, la, ku, la kumalizia kwa sababu ulikuwa mmoja wa presenters. Aha, so uh, presentation yangu ili focus sana kwenye kwenye gender but uh, point yangu ilikuwa inclusion, right? So tuna taka mwisho wa siku tunapokuwa kwa sababu kwenye swala la kutengeneza mifumo Tanzania ndo tuko kwenye ile prime ndo tunaanza hatujafanya mistakes nyingi ambazo wenzetu walioanza bila kuwa na perspective ya inclusion either ni gender au ndio hiyo mambo ya old programmers wamefanya tuna opportunity kubwa sana ya kuchukulia kwamba kama unatengeneza mfumo take a step back and was give him mwanamke akitumia hii mzee akitumia hii au kijana alioko huko sijui na nyumbu akitumia hii does it work then tutatengeneza products na mimi as ninachotamani ni kwamba eh, conference itakayofuata hapa mtu atakayekuja kuongelea agenda hayo mwanaume anasema you see nili include female kwenye team yangu look at what we have done nili include watu wazee kwenye testing look at what we have done kuliko sisi tunaweza kama tunalalamika sana so Hopefully, mta tusaidia kwenye ilo. Asante. Uh, Diana. Thank you. Um, Mr. Sostenes, um, uliuliza maswali mengi, but I'll just maybe uh, respond or reflect to a few. Um, one of them, I know that uh, College of ICT wana shirikiana na UNICEF ku... Um, run something called Youth for Children Hub, and this is um, around human-centered design. They, they get students within the hub, and they tell them to go in the communities and see challenges ambazo watoto wana face, and give them one year to create solutions. And some of these solutions wame wamewasaidia vijana kuzitengeneza zikawa working prototypes. Um, so they just need to scale. And so just uh, riding on that same point, then I would uh, imagine that uh, problem-based learning approaches in schools are one of the biggest ideas that we need to be looking at. Um, I know some universities were meanza to adapt, University of Dar es Salaam. Um, Tumaini most recently was working on innovation models, uh, modules, or to integrate them kwenye curriculum, um, and several other universities are also uh, catching pace. Um, another big idea I would imagine ni youth to youth models. So we have 75% youth of the population. How do we use those youth for youth? I mean, you, you only are left with 25%. Um, it's not enough to uh, respond or work on solutions for those youth. Now, I was reflecting earlier and seeing some of these partners about Konao Leo. Most of them are youth founded spaces, hubs, innovation spaces, accelerators. What any vijana? So I think the final thought for me, I would quote my friend Jose from the EU, is that. Um, we have a very ripe and rich eco space. So don't reinvent the wheels. Tap into the existing eco space and accelerate the work that people are already doing on the ground. Thanks. Thank you, Diana. Uh, tutakuwa na contribution moja, alafu nitakuenda kufunga. Ninaomba ni mkaribishe mkurugenzi wa tehama kutoka tamisemi. Ata jitambulisha, alafu ata toa commenti yake. Karibu. Uh, asante sana. Ni <coughs> sorry. Ni swala ambalo limeulizwa na ndugu pale namna ambavyo shule direct inaweza ikawa scale up kwa haraka. Na na nilichotaka kusema ni kwamba tunafanya kazi na shule direct na kwa sababu na ili pia najibu swali lililoulizwa asubuhi kuhusu silos. Serikali saa hizi tunashirikiana sana na private kuhakikisha kwamba tuna leverage efforts zote zilizopo kuweza kukimbia. Na kwa maana ya kufanya kazi na shule directi, tuta atakuwa na uwezo wa kuzivikia shule zote zaidi ya elfu na moja ambazo zinasema miwa na tamisemi. Lakini pia atakuwa na uwezo wa kufikia wanafunzi zaidi ya milioni kuminatatu ambao wako chini ya ofisi ya rais tamisemi. Likewise pia tunafanya kazi na tasaf. Tasaf wa wanawapa watoto wale ambao wana shida fedha za kuweza kuwasaidia kwenda shule. Kwa hiyo tukifanya kazi na tasaf kwenye mfumo ambao unamenejo watoto kwa maudhuri ya kila siku tutakuwa na uwezo wa kujua yule mtoto ambaye 
anapata funding ya tasa afuje anakwenda shuleni hiyo inakuwa rais kwa hiyo kwa mashirikiano hayo yeyote yule ambaye yuko hapa na unataka kwenda kwenye local level mnakaribishwa sana tamisemi wakisha kwamba ya mambo yanakwenda na mkitaka kujua nguvu ya tamisemi naomba wana tamisemi wote mlioko hapa msimame ili nguvu ya tamisemi iweze kuonekana na namna ambavyo mnaweza mkapata support wana tamisemi kwa hiyo mnaona hiyo ni nguvu ya tamisemi na tamisemi tunaita tamisemi ya wananchi. Neno moja ambalo tunatakiwa tuondoke nalo hapa system integration start with people integration. Watu wasipo integrate no way system zitaweza ku integrate. Asante sana. Asante sana kwa kwa mchango na kutuonyesha jeshi lako. Eh, kwa kweli salute. <laughs> Uh, ninapoelekea mwisho kabisa uh, kulikuwa na michango mingi tumeongelea gap asubuhi waliongelea uh, mambo ya local content tukaona jinsi gani lugha imekuwa niberia lakini ninaomba pia ni, 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 ni seme kwamba nimetambua tatizo pia linaweza likali naanzia huku kwetu sisi kama hapa nimekuwa nikijitahidi kuwakumbusha watu kuongea Kiswahili na bado tunarudi kuongea kiingereza je tunapokuwa pale tumekaa wewe ndio programa unatengeneza ile app ama unatengeneza ile website ni lugha gani itakuwa rahisi kwako nadhani majibu tunayo kichwani uh, katika kumalizia hasa kwenye ripoti ambayo uh, Diana ali, alifanya presentation ninaomba ni mkaribishe engineer Mwela meza ku na eh panelist ambao mko mnazungumzia eh katika hii mada sasa hizi kitu ambacho kimefanyika katika kipindi cha kama miaka miwili mitatu iliyopita kati ya tume ya tehama na digital opportunity trust ni program yetu ya Tanzania Youth Digital Summit ambayo ikiwa inalenga vijana hasa kuwapa ujuzi kuhusiana na matumizi ya uh, teknolojia hizi kwa ajili ya kujiajiri. Na taarifa ambayo ameizindua ni kweli taarifa ambayo tumeifanya kwa kushirikiana na tunawashukuru sana umoja wa Ulaya ambao wamekoa wamefadhili hii study. Na kuna mengi yametokea na kwa hiyo taarifa hii kuanzia sasa itakuwa inapatikana kwa wale ambao watahitaji kwenda kwa undani zaidi kuona nini ambacho kimefanyika. Uh, katika taarifa hii tumeangalia sana jinsi ambavyo ya kuwawezesha vijana katika uh, eh, nchi nzima na kwa kuanzia tukasema tunaanza na kanda kwa hiyo tumegawa kanda kama mnavyofahamu kuna ule mradi wa Digital Tanzania ambao uh, lengo lake kubwa hasa ni kuweza kuwasaidia vijana katika kanda. Kwa hiyo kutakuwa na kanda ambazo tutashirikiana na Digital Opportunity Trust katika kuwaelimisha vijana lakini pia kuandaa vijana kuweza kunufaika kunufaika na ujuzi wa tehamu. Uh, kwa, kwa kusema hivyo uh, niendelee tena kurudia kutoa shukrani zangu sana ila sasa ni waombe wote e, walioko serikalini walioko sekta binafsi e, mashirika ya washirika wa maendeleo e, pamoja na wadau viuo na kadhalika tuweze kushirikiana kwa sababu kama tunajenga taifa la kidijitali kama tunavyozungumzia maana yake tunahitaji uh, kuandaa wananchi e, kuweza kunufaika na kuandaa wananchi katika mijadala ambayo imefanyika maana yake kwamba tunahitaji uh, kuhakikisha kwamba wanakuwa na ujuzi wa kutosha lakini wanatumia mara nyingi sana tehama zinazotumika wanatumia katika mambo madogo madogo sana e, tunataka watumie mambo e, karibu tehama kwa mapana yake kwa sababu ina vitu vingi sana na wadau wote walioko hapa na wataalamu wa tehama walioko hapa e, tuhakikishe kwamba uh, tunakuwa chachu kuhakikisha kwamba tuleta mabadiliko katika nchi yetu sisi tume ya Tehama tunawasajili wataalamu wa Tehama. Na katika taarifa hii uh, imezungumzwa kwamba katika wataalamu wa Tehama tuliowasajili eh, ni 12 tu ni wanawake. 
eh, 88 ni wanaume. Kwa hiyo kuna changamoto. Sasa stadi ambayo ameeleza uh, Dr. Salome kwamba kumbe nilikuwa najiuliza hivi tatizo linakuwa ni nini? Kwa nini ni asimia 12 tu? Kumbe wakifika asilimia thela, uh, miaka 35 eh, kuna kuwa na changamoto pale. Na, 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 na hata 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 Pamela naye alikuwa na, amekutana na changamoto hiyo. Kwa hiyo inawezekana kwamba kuna watu wanabadilika eh, kwa ku, maana hiyo kuna kuwa na changamoto hiyo kubwa. Basi tuombe eh, zile recommendations ambazo zimetolewa katika taarifa hizi wadau wote tushirikiane Digital Opportunity Trust watakuepo CCICT Commission tutakuepo na wizara kushirikiana kuhakikisha kwamba tunahakikisha kwamba uh, tunaleta mabadiliko na tehama inatumika kwa ajili ya maendeleo ya nchi yetu. Baada ya kusema haya, hii ripoti imezinduliwa rasmi, mtaipata wakati wote. Asanteni sana. Kwa hiyo hiyo inatupeleka mwisho wa uh, session yetu ya jioni ya leo. Tulianza mchana kwenye sanane. Ninaamini imekuwa ni, ni session nzuri kwetu sote, tumeifurahia. Na kikubwa pia tumewafahamu presenters wetu na tumefahamu yale wanayoyafanya. Nimefurahia kuwa moderator wa session hii na asanteni kwa kuwa wasikilizaji wazuri. Asante. Asante ni sana Digital Opportunity Trusting